Good morning, everybody, from Disneyland Paris. Today is going to be really one of those weird transitional days because, <laughs> uh, you know, we are basically kind of going to be flying today. We are flying today. And then we're going to be flying tomorrow, and it's going to be this weird kind of transitional video. I don't really know how else to explain it other than it's going to be really interesting. I'm going to be a ball of stress. I'm going to try to not stress Taylor out, and hopefully by the end of it, everything will have gone well. All right, so we're walking in, and today's our last day. I'm sad. So I'd say like one of the biggest disappointments. Not that it's a disappointment, but <laughs> but there's construction, so we can't we can't take the the genuine entrance into Disneyland. But you know, I mean, it's still like just a magical place. You know what? But you know what? That just means we have to come back so that we can well, do just that entrance over there. It does. But I'm glad though that on our first visit, the castle was not under construction. Oh, like good it call. was in Disneyland California. So we'll finally be seeing that for the first time in two weeks. But oh, I'm sad to leave Disneyland Paris. I love it here. Something that we weren't actually able to show you guys was uh, if you have tickets that you need to pick up. When we first got here, we already had our tickets. Um, they provided them to us. So today, we actually have to go pick up tickets here uh, at the park. And uh, you can do that just down below the Disneyland Park Hotel. It's pretty simple. It's really just like any other theme park that you would go to that's Disney. Uh, you know, it's self-explanatory. The, the ticketing booths are right there. And then they're right next to the actual entrances into the park. So should be easy breezy my bad everybody Kayla just pointed out that i'm not showing anything <laughs> so uh this is the guest relations area this is one side of it this is on the exact same other side um, where you can pick your tickets up at so literally like just any other disneyland park walt disney world right it's all the same so we're gonna go to this window i'm not gonna show her i'm gonna put this down but we're gonna get our tickets so super easy we got our tickets um if you are picking your tickets up you should have like a booking number or something to use but um, so it's eight o'clock and the park officially opens, I believe at 930. So which means that we have an extra magic hour here, which is kind of cool, but we can't obviously get in the park yet. So we still have a few minutes. So we're going to go to the other side of about 15 minutes, still. which is the uh, guest resorts. Uh, if you're staying at a hotel, that's resort, where you're going to enter guests. into the park. Yeah, that's where <laughs> you're going to enter the park at. So we have to now go back to the other side. Uh, it's our last view of the castle here at Disneyland Paris today, which is super sad. As we make our way here up to the castle, we are actually gonna go ride Dumbo first because uh, that's what Taylor wants to do. She wants to ride Dumbo. It's a classic rope drop attraction when you're a kid. So that's what we're going for. We're, we're children at heart today. So the standby line here is all outside for the most part, except for the covered area here underneath the tent. This is what it used to look like at Disney World when Dumbo was behind the carousel. Huh. Classic attraction. Bring back some old memories. I hope Josh can find our VHS videos he put on digital because there is footage of Dumbo at Magic Kingdom. All right, so we are gonna ride Peter Pan's flight. And what's really funny is that just like in Walt Disney World, uh, people run to get onto this attraction before it gets super long, which is kind of crazy. So you can see the line is uh, already kind of long. It says it's 15 minutes, but we'll see. next ride is the Seven Dwarves. No, it's Snow White. And the Seven Dwarves. Snow White. And the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> Blanche, I'm not even going to pronounce that, but that's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves right there. That's what that says. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I still, I guess Snow White, I just don't understand how it ends. It's like you get up, you get up to that point and she's, she's going to push the rock. Does the rock fall back on her? What happens? I never know. So something we haven't done yet, and I feel like we have to do, everybody's meeting Mickey up here, is ride the railroad. So they also have a railroad here, and we haven't ridden the railroad in so long because at Magic Kingdom Walt Disney World, it's closed. Station for on the descent and back. This way we not stop in the other station. Next up, Port Charlie on Depot. All right, so we got some food. It's just quick service. Taylor's got a uh, half a chicken, and I just went with a burger that has uh, some arugula, tomato, onion rings, catch uh, no ketchup, but cheese. Comes with mayo. Believe it or not, they actually have Heinz over here. It's mm -hmm. the first ketchup packet I think we've seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, the meals came with, you can get ice cream or yogurt. I got yogurt, Taylor got ice cream. And uh, we got some fruits, so we're gonna chow down. Hello everyone. I wanted to give you guys this little update real quick because I had a really great transitional idea in my head of going from Paris all the way to Seattle, but things just went really, really wrong for us. And you're gonna video? Yeah, so <laughs> it's been a hot minute right now. Um, been super stressed. We just got to the airport uh, almost uh, like- At 2.30. At 2.30 we were here. And uh, it's 3.05, it's been a nightmare. So we flew business over, but when you fly economy back, you only get 12 kilograms per person on the plane. Uh, to, carry your, carry to carry Both on to carry on to carry on so if you if your other carry on right if you've got a roller and a, and a backpack if those are over you have to check one no matter what um, so we did not know that which is really unfortunate um, because it has set us way back hopefully uh, this is not a long line for security but we're going to find out here real shortly <laughs> All right, so we- All I have to tell you is that Josh is sweating a lot right now. I am, That profusely. should explain the situation that's going on. <laughs> profusely. So we made it to the gate, which is- Yes, thank, thank goodness. goodness. Um, but yeah, so you guys know, cause I was like, I was like really stressed when we were moving through there. Um, basically, if you fly like economy plus or business or like first class or something, apparently you get more weight in your bags and it's, they don't even i don't even know if they even check you when you're going through it's, it's a lot more kilograms <laughs> um it's almost double the weight so yeah. it's almost like taking a check bag on yeah and of course you guys know like i take a bunch of camera stuff because we need the camera stuff camera Laptop, gear is heavy ipad camera the lenses stuff. are heavy yeah so we got over there and they told us that our bags were too heavy we we're gonna check them and they were telling me i was gonna check my backpack which has my laptop and my lens and lens, the computer lenses. and the lenses yeah <laughs> and the computer and the ipad all that stuff which i said i can't do because i can't i can't put that in the, under the plane anyways they like don't allow would, you to do that no and it would break but um <laughs> so keep that in mind if you're going to fly internationally make sure that you're weighing your bags and you check to see what mm -hmm. the airline um allows yes uh, especially for whatever class you're flying in right so because we like i said because we flew business over and I, it didn't so matter i was just gonna say Lesson learned. Whatever you fly one way, fly that the other way. And I was gonna that try way you to can pack accordingly. And I was gonna try to upgrade us, but when I got on to check in, mm -hmm. there were no upgrades into business, so yeah. we were out of luck. And I yeah. tried to ask at the desk. I was like, "Is can there?" Can we pay? We'll pay anything like, to I'll, take this stuff with us. <laughs> like I don't want to check it. So the problem is with us checking. You might be like, "Well, what's the problem?" The problem oh, is right. is that we have to make a connection in Miami, but the connection is not through Air France. Right. It's a completely different airline. It's through American. So we have to completely exit. Yes. All the way out. We have to go all the way down to bag check and get our stuff. And then we have to come back up and in through all the security. Now, when we did this a couple years ago, we flew American. It was all like within the same 
uh, terminal, terminal, so it was no issue. Yeah, so it took like five minutes to get from one gate to the next. Yeah, so we'll see. We're at the gate, thank God. We can drink we some have, water. We do have a backup Bye. plan, though, for Miami, just yeah, in case. Yeah, yeah. So we've made it to Miami, and it's uh, 9.30, and our flight takes off at 10.45. We're still on the plane. So we finally got off the plane and uh, we're still waiting for our bags and we are missing that flight. So thankfully we uh, have an amazing friend or we would be stuck in Miami tonight and would probably miss our flight to Seattle tomorrow, tomorrow. morning. At the end of the entire day, when we finally made it all the way back to Orlando um, and to home, I got roughly maybe 45 minutes, maybe an hour and a half of sleep before we literally had to get back up. Uh, you know, if we had anything that was in the washer, in the dryer, whatever, throw that into our suitcase and hit the road back to MCO uh, to get on our flight from there to Seattle. So it was a whirlwind of an experience. We had an amazing time in Paris, uh, but execution at the airport in France was uh, not good for us. So uh, again, keep that in mind. If you're flying, uh, you know, economy, you only get, what is it, like 20 kilos or something, whatever it was I said on there. Um, so keep that in mind. I had all of my camera stuff, all of my equipment, and I had to inevitably check some of it because they just were not going to let me take it on the plane. So Anyways, uh, we made it all the way to Seattle, and we just had to go see somebody who is near and dear to our hearts and a very special someone. So we're in Seattle. We are all checked into our room, and we made our way to Bothell, Washington, which was about a 25-minute, 30-minute drive from our hotel, the State Hotel in downtown Seattle. We are at the Crow Bar, and the way we found this place is... Our friend Cam, who you may know from Bullet Bear in the past, uh, he moved to Seattle and he now works here at the Crow Bar and he is the best bartender ever. So we had to come and see him. Plus he's one of our friends, so we wanted to see him for that as well. But we already got our drinks and we are excited to dig in tonight. Hey, what's up? How are you? <laughs> Oh my god. That's a silent cry. It's a silent, silent cry. cry. Is that on there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I felt that it was only necessary to start this night off with uh, the drink called Cameron, which is Cam's name. So, uh, his namesake. So, this is uh, strawberry gin. It is a barrel aged gin, sumac, tamarind, and grapefruit. And uh, served with a little orange peel, which uh, just adds a nice aromatic, like, you know. Smell to it, it's great. Oh, wow. Oh, it's wonderful. It's so light. It's fresh. The strawberry in there just gets a little bit of hint. Like, like it's just, it's subtle, but it's there. It's a little sweet, but not too sweet. I mean, it's, it's a cam drink. There's no doubt about that. Like, it is just darn near perfect. All right, so second drink. This will probably be my last one for tonight. Um, but this is the curtain call, which is uh, perfect for the last drink. Exactly. Um, which, which, as Cam brought it out, was like this is very different than what I would normally drink, and it is. Um, this is popcorn wash, James E. Pepper, seventeen seventy six bourbon. I don't drink bourbon. Uh, high house pineapple and agave. Uh, Biscotti liqueur, barrel age, uh, bitters, and lemon. So uh, it's actually served with a little popcorn on the side. And uh, I don't know. This, this... All right. We'll do better on this one. Wow. Um, I'll tell you what, always a surprise. Always a surprise. There is almost no taste of the bourbon, which I really enjoy because bourbon for me just, it, it has a, a weird taste to me that I just don't like. Um, I can, it, no, that's not true. I can taste it in there, but it's not so at the forefront of the drink that it takes over, right? All of those other combinations of flavors in there are just 
they they are just in sync. And this is once again like I would never order this on the menu if I saw it because there's bourbon in it. And you leave it to Cam to uh, find a way. And boy, oh boy, doesn't he? So the final curtain call, the last curtain call, or the curtain call. That's all it is. Just the curtain call. Uh, is a little bit play, a little bit of a play on the the bar restaurant here itself. They actually have uh, some theater seats up top and uh, kind of like a movie playing up there. So it's a little bit of a play on that. So it's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, it just, it, again, a synonymous like blend of everything that's here. So it's, it's great. All right, so for my second drink, I'm having a banana daiquiri. And I've never had a banana daiquiri before, but I love daiquiris. Now this banana daiquiri is, it's unique because you expect it to be like a sweet banana flavored tropical explosion and it's the exact opposite of that. Very smooth and it's got a lime hint in it that just makes it roll. It is really good and it's got two slices of banana in it. That's really good. So in classic Cam fashion, I said, what should I have? And he said, I think you'll like the Aqua Ardens Volume 2. So that's what I had. Pim's number one, Heyman's Slow Gin, Lemon, and a Cinnamon Vapor Infusion. So it had that little bubble on the top there. Mm. I just spilled it on myself. <laughs> it has a little... It almost gives me like um, tiki drink feel to it because of the cinnamon. Uh, I I feel like anytime I've had a tiki drink, it's had some kind of like cinnamon or flarinum. This doesn't have flarinum in it, but so smooth. And when a drink is smooth, you know it is made well. So we also had one of almost everything that was on the on the menu for food. Uh, it's all small plates and that you can share, which was fantastic for us. We all just kind of ate off of the plates, and I mean it was fantastic. This gnocchi right here, the best, uh, absolutely amazing. And then we also had some scallops, again super fresh, and that skirt steak right there. Oh, it was mouth watering. And of course, we had to finish the night off with some desserts. So the next time that you're in Seattle, visiting the Crowbar here, which is just north of the city, is well worth it. It's a small, intimate place. There's not a lot of seats, but the food, the entertainment from your amazing bartender cam is going to be phenomenal. So make sure that you stop in and check it out. Now, I will say that even though we had a really rough start to our Seattle trip, it is by no means... Uh, you know, anything of what to look forward to. We had an amazing time and we cannot wait to share with you guys everything that we got to do from Seattle to Alaska and to Disneyland to finish it all off. So we will see you all in the next one. <laughs>